Amen. Well, what a joy it is to be here today, and thank each and every one of you for uh, being here for our college students, leading us in worship and sharing with us. Thank you, Brad, Sydney, and Rob, for your words and for sharing, giving us a glimpse into the great things that God can do. One of the things that I want to share with us today is God can do great things through us. You know, it was an incredible experience that I had at camp. Now, that could be defined a lot of ways. But it was a good experience. I want parents to know, first of all, thank you for allowing your child to go and to experience this great week. And also, you should be proud of your kids. I know when, when I was a parent, my kids, well, I still am that way when my kids go off to camp. You know, it's kind of like, oh, gosh, what are they going to do? What are they going to get into? How are they going to act? You know, all that stuff away from home. But let me tell you, parents, your kids did awesome. They did great. We had no homesickness that I knew of. Um, we had uh, good relationships. There wasn't a whole lot of whining. There was a little bit of tiredness uh, in that 100 and plus degree weather that we had in the afternoons when we were out in the sun. Let me tell you, we put on sunscreen. I wore my golfing hat to protect my whole head, uh, and it was a good thing, but it was a great experience because God did some good things. Um, like I said earlier, there are some God's working in the lives of our kids, just like he's been working in the lives of our students, and as evident today in the lives of our college students. Uh, and it's amazing what God can do when we let him. You know, one of the great things I shared with the early service is the things that I like about Centra Kids is um, with us doing VBS earlier in the summer, our kids got to hear about the fact that God provides, and he provided to us Jesus, and the gospel presentation presented in such a way that it was very easy. And we got to camp, and do you know what we heard? Because it's all life way, we heard the same exact thing. The kids were able to hear that God provided Jesus and that God, Jesus died for our sins and uh, the gospel presentation. So it was repetitive of the things that they've heard even here in church during Vacation Bible School, but even at camp. So it was a great experience. And the teaching experience was incredible for our kids. Now, we're going to show the video again after the service and the complete thing. And you're going to be able to see OMC. Because that's a big thing at Centric Kids. And what that is, is OMC is Organized Mass Chaos. Because it was truly chaotic in some of the games and the things. That's where all the shaving cream and the silly string and the water balloons come out. They have to do certain things like bust water balloons on their heads and all this kind of stuff. But let me tell you this. And something about shaving cream and kids, they're just drawn to each other. It's like they just stand there and it just sucks to them. And so there were adults. We love to spray shaving cream all over. But after everything was done and all the points were added up and everything was over, they gathered all the kids up just like they've done all week long through all the fun stuff. And they said, let me share something to you. We're taught, we have a lot of shaving cream on us. And the director of, of recreation, Mason was his name, and he had a, a shaving cream can. And he said, I'm going to spray this on all the kids so everybody can experience this. And he went to spray it. And, of course, all the kids were like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And some of them were like, let me have it. But as he sprayed, nothing came out of the can. And he said, see, kids, God calls us to do great things for him and to bear fruit. And that's what we're all called to do. But if we don't have anything on the inside, nothing will come out. Just like this shaving cream, as we're all covered with shaving cream at the end of OMC. So even through those teaching opportunities, the kids got to see the great things that God can do. And that's what I want to challenge you today. Whether you're a kid that went to camp or a parent or an adult or a college student fixing to leave and go off to a college campus, we need to be reminded that God can do great things. And so that brings a question to each and every one of us. What can God do through you that is great? What is something that God can do through you? And I'm reminded of a story, another story about a kid, a young kid by the name of James who desired to be the most famous manufacturer and salesman of cheese in America. And as a young boy, what he did was he planned to become rich and famous. So what he did was he made his cheese and he put it on his little wagon, and he hitched up his pony, which was by the name Patty. So he hitched up Patty to his wagon, and he 
took his cheese to the streets of Chicago and he wanted to sell his cheese and become rich and famous and do great things. And after some time, after months and months had passed, this young boy, James, got frustrated and almost to the point of despair because he wasn't making the money that he thought he should make. And one day as he's walking along with Patty in his wagon, he just stops and talks to his pony. Have you ever talked to your pony? Many of you probably don't have a pony. But have you ever talked to your dog or something like that? <laughs> well, James said, Patty, things aren't going the way I thought. They're just not doing good. Maybe I have my priorities wrong. And this is what James said to Patty and himself. He said, you know, I'm going to change things up. Maybe I need to start following God first and then do what he wants me to do. And then maybe I'll be able to do great things. And so he went home that night and he prayed and he made a commitment to God saying, I'm going to follow you, God, and then you can tell me what you want me to do. And many years passed and the young boy, now a man, stood as the Sunday school superintendent of North Shore Baptist Church in Chicago. And he said, I would rather be in this position serving God than to be the chairman of the biggest corporation in America. Because I know that if I follow God, I can do great things. So let me just tell you, in all of your dreams, the next time that you take a bite of Philadelphia cream cheese or sip a cup of Maxwell House coffee, or mix a quart of Kool-Aid for your kids, or slice up DiGiorno pizza, or cook a pot of mac and cheese, or spread some gray poupon, or stir a bowl of cream of wheat, or slurp up some good old jello, or eat the middle of the Oreo cookie. I want you to remember what this little boy, James L. Kraft, and his pony did to do great things. Because we all can do great things, but it's not until we follow God can we truly experience something great. You know, there's another great man that, that I admire and like who has passed on, but Truett Cathy, a founder of Chick-fil-A. You know, many people thought he was crazy for not being open on Sunday and for giving the benefits to employees like he has through the years and scholarships to students. But yet, I think Chick-fil-A will survive because I would really love to have one in Whitehall. But this was somebody who followed God and ended up doing great things. You see, each and every one of us can do something great. But what is God asking us to do in our life? How can he do great things in our life? There's two things that I want us to consider when we answer this question. What is God wanting me to do? How can God do something great in your life? Because you may be seven years old today, or you may be 70 years old today, but God can do something great in your life. But there's two things that I want us to consider when we answer that question. And the first one is that we've got to realize faith has to overcome feelings. Faith has to overcome feelings. And what I mean by this is that sometimes our feelings get in the way of us stepping out in faith. Our feelings get in the way of us stepping out in faith. A lot of times what we may say is we may allow our feelings to direct us instead of faith. To do something great with God, we first of all have to have faith in God. It was one of these things. I had the great opportunity for speaking to, to talk with one of our uh, kids at camp this week. Uh, just battling with, like all of us battle, with the feelings that we have sometimes of being unworthy. And it was so amazing to me to hear this child say, no, I know that I have salvation and I'm saved, but I just deal with those feelings and I feel guilty and I feel unworthy because of the sin in my life. And adults, let me tell you this. That struck a chord with me to hear from the mouth of a child to be able to say, I feel unworthy when I have sin in my life. But you know what? That's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to feel bad. But what we have to do is to let faith overcome feeling and to know that faith in Jesus Christ 
can change everything and I can do great things because of what my faith is in Jesus Christ. You see, this idea of faith over feelings brings us to two things. Faith in Jesus results in two things. One, it gives us forgiveness and cleansing. Now, let me show you. If you're going to do something great for God, a lot of times, if you're going to do something great, you have to prepare yourself for that. Just like you have to realize what your priority are. Pri- priorities are, or you have to set certain goals to be able to reach that. But to do something great, you have to realize where you're at. Well, let me tell you, to have faith over your feelings, you've got to understand what faith is to you. The fact that through Jesus, we have forgiveness and cleansing. And this is a great thing. Let me tell you, if you want to think, oh, I can't do anything for God, think about what Jesus has done for you. The fact that Jesus is the one that died for your sin. So you may think, oh, I can't be something great. I can't be a mission. I can't go on a mission trip to Africa or to the Southeast Asia. I can't do those kind of things. I can't go to Haiti. I can't go. I can't be a chaperone at kids camp. It's just too much for me. Well, God can do great things when we allow him and understand that it's Jesus that died for our sins. So let me ask you this question. If Jesus died for your sins to forgive you, of all your sins. Think about what he can do if we actually give him our life and say, okay, Jesus, since you died on the cross to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me, then what amazing things can you do through me? But the question is, we have to understand, do we have faith enough to let Jesus do great things in us? Jesus died for us to forgive us and to cleanse us, to give us a new life. Scripture teaches us this. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That he died for your sins. That's a great thing. And for us to know that God can do great things through us, we have to understand, first, the great thing that he did for us. And that Jesus died for us. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, We are made alive with Christ even when we were dead in sins. The fact that we are made alive and made new again is something great. So you think, oh, I just don't know about doing those great things. I mean, that's kind of radical. That's some radical talk you're speaking there, Brother Paul. But it's the idea that, listen, God's already done it. He sent Jesus to die on the cross to forgive you of your sins and to give you a new start and to cleanse you so that you could walk in faith. And you don't have to be afraid of that. You don't have to be afraid or to fear or to have insecurities or all those kind of things because Jesus gives us new life. And it's not that you have to do it. Let me tell you, if it was up to me to be able to do great things, (laughs) I'd still be waiting for the great thing. Because when we talk about what Jesus did for you, that's a great thing. When we talk about how much Jesus loves you, that's a great thing. When we talk about how Jesus can change who you are from where you're at right now, that's a great thing. But we have to let faith direct us and not our feelings. Second thing that I want to share with you is the fact that we walk in faith. It's just not faith over our feelings, but we have to walk in faith. Because you see, sometimes when our feelings overcome us and we say, Oh, God can't do anything great through me. Oh, this is going to be bad because I'm all alone. We have to understand Jesus has already done so much to give us faith. But now we are supposed to walk in that faith. Let's look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. Matthew chapter 17. Did I just skip something? I sure did, didn't I? I skipped over that, empowered with the Holy Spirit. All right, it'll come back around. We'll get there. Second thing, walk in faith. Matthew chapter 17 Verse 14, Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. You can turn in your Bibles there or you can follow me on the screen. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. This is a great story of Jesus and his disciples. And he says this in verse 14. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire and into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Verse 17, Jesus replied, O unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. 
Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed from that moment. In verse 19, then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. You see, one of the great things that we can understand is when we're faced with this question, is God going to do something great in my life? We first of all have to realize that if God's going to do something great, I have to walk in faith. You see, the disciples struggled with that. These are the disciples, the followers of Jesus, the ones that were with him all the time and heard from him, the disciples, and yet they couldn't do something because the Bible says they had little faith. But yet Jesus says, listen, if you will just have faith the size of a mustard seed, which actually the mustard seed was the smallest seed that they knew of that time, But if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can do great things. Nothing is impossible with faith. So what you may be saying is, Paul, you think that I can overcome my fears? Can I gain great wealth? That's not. Maybe. I don't know. If that's in God's will. I mean, obviously he blessed craft to see what it is today, starting from where it was, a little boy in his pony. He could do great things, but it was because of his faithfulness. God can do great things through you, even in the young age of a child, to be able to do these faithful things. Why? Because Jesus told his disciples, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing is impossible for you. Why is this possible? How is it possible for us to be able to have faith like that, to be able to walk? Because Jesus calls all of us to faith and to trust in him. And you see, the thing is, folks, is it's not you and me. Can you move a mountain on your own? No, I couldn't. Maybe one pebble at a time, but wonder how long that would take. But yet, what, G- what Jesus is talking about is that we, if we open ourselves up to him, just like that sh- can of shaving cream, if there's nothing inside, nothing's going to come out. But if... As the kids this week learned in Center Kid Camp, as we learned that to be able to embrace God and engage God and, and, and to, to, to know God more and to grow and walk in faith, we've got to pray to God. We've got to read God's word. We've got to know God. We've got to walk and do all these things. Because what happens is we become empowered. This is the point that I skipped over. We become empowered by Jesus, because he now lives within us. Because this faith that we're walking in and trusting in Jesus, Jesus who died for our sins, we are now empowered because Jesus said he is going to live within us. Let me share you this verse. Oh, thank you, Doug. You went back with me. Let me share this verse. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. You see, his power now comes within us. This morning I was reading, and, uh, um, and I came across in, in part of my reading this morning, as I do daily, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Because I use an app on my phone, and this just happened to be the verse of the day. And I read it, and I thought, this goes exactly with what I'm going to be preaching about today. And it said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, that we are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit, that we are being transformed. Now, think about this. God created us in His image. And some some of you may be thinking, well, how is that possible? How could we be in the image of God? Jesus even, I mean, the Apostle Paul even says in this text that we are being transformed into His image, the image of Jesus. That means that with Jesus within us, He's changing us. So here's the question. If we're going to do something great for God, something has to change within us. And that change comes when the Holy Spirit comes within us. The power of the resurrection living inside of you to do great things. You may think, oh, it's impossible. I can't change. Nothing can change about me. All the bad things I've done are still going to be with me. No, Jesus says that he's forgiven us. Remember, we talked about that. 
Don't be afraid because Jesus has forgiven us. He says, your sin is cast as far as from the east is from the west. How far away is the east is from the west? Well, from one end to the other. It's always there. But, but we have to understand that in order to walk in faith, we have to know that Jesus has given us that faith and he's given us the power to be able to step in faith. So you have power. Did you know that? You have power within you to walk in faith. That's how God can do great things through us. How can God work in the lives of kids and do great things? Because I saw some great things this week. I saw kids that were hugging and loving on each other. Sometimes it was a little rough, but I saw kids that were opening doors for others. I saw kids that were helping clean up after others. I saw kids encouraging. Kids are going to be kids, okay? So there were moments of tension, but that's okay. But I saw God doing great things through kids. And so how can it that in the life of a kid, God can do something, but yet for us who are older and know more about God, that we say, God, I just don't think you can do this. I don't want to do this. It's the idea of you and me walking in the faith that we say and proclaim that we have and say, hey, God, I just don't know. But for God to do great things, you and I have to walk in faith. Maybe today God is asking some of you to do something great. Maybe it's to trust him for the first time, which is a great thing because, as I said, that's the greatest thing that God can do through Jesus is salvation himself. But maybe God is asking you to do great things. And maybe your great thing today is just something simple like starting to read his Bible on a daily basis. If you're not reading God's word, your shaving cream can is empty. If you're not praying to God on a daily basis, what kind of power are you going to have when that trouble comes? If you're not experiencing worship by coming together, What's your week going to be like when your focus and priorities are all out of whack? How can God do something great in your life? In James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. Doug, I'm sorry, I'm skipping all over the place here. In James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25, it says this. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. That idea of deceive is basically betray yourself. Why would, who wants to betray yourself? I mean, we've, we know what it's like for other people to betray us. But, but for us, who wants to betray yourself? Who wants to fool yourself? And that's what this verse is saying. Do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourself or betray yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after, walking, after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Great things is what God wants to do in our life. But if we're not walking in faith, then that's going to be impossible. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, it says this, The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. And this is how we know that we are in him. Whoever claims, listen to this, whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. So let me ask you this question. How can God, who's done great things, who created all things, who created you, who loved you enough to send Jesus to die on the cross for your sins, how can God, that God, do something great in your life? It's because of faith. Your faith. Your faith. So what are you doing today to walk in faith? To be able to know that God is going to do something great today. God is going to do something great for me today. Walking in faith. Praying. Reading God's word. Worshiping together. Serving one another. 
Listen, this is what I saw this week in our kids. Hundreds of them. There was over 700 kids there. And to be able to see them worshiping together and studying God's word together and praying together. And in fact, in our church group time, I had some of our kids pray because I think it's important for them to learn how to pray in a group, to be able to know that God can, God can do something great even if it's strength enough to be able to pray or to come up here and share a testimony or sing in front of people or to be here. What is God wanting to do in your life? Are you walking in faith? Because if you are, get ready because God can do something great. If not, if not... Why not do something great today? You may want God to do something great by asking Him to be your Lord and Savior today. And Scripture teaches us that if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, then we will be saved. So if we place our trust in Jesus and give Him our life so that He becomes Lord and boss of our life, then we will be saved. And that's salvation, and that's the first great thing that God wants to do in your life. But for those of us who have a relationship with Jesus, maybe there's some things we need to stop and reprioritize. Maybe we need to start obeying God more first and then figure out what God wants me to do. What is God asking you to do today? Because I know it's something great. But what is your step of faith? Let's pray.